live are we going live um i don't use this software um google hangouts as much as i do other things twitch and stuff as you probably know by now i kind of do these webinars maybe uh i don't know well once a month something like that um and i hope you can hear me can you hear me can you see me so if you can confirm in the chat box um i will get going with today's little lesson so i've got some quite cool stuff i think planned for you and we'll, we'll get going in a minute we'll just wait and see if anyone else wants to join us here um for a little bit of chess um so you can hear me loud and clear that's what we like to that's what we like to hear and even loud and clear where's claire let's bring claire in shall we side chest Elia. um now um what has been going on well i i've been busy with numerous things work and play because you know a life without play is is a blooming dull life we all need to uh have a little bit of play now and again and i had a big play on saturday it was um a lot of fun we had the ginger gem first ginger gem party um and that's something we're, we're hoping to continue in the future hopefully get more people uh joining in the ginger gym party in the future um you know it'd be nice to get james munro in the chat here to to come along who who uh i was hoping to see in america i know it's a long way to england but who knows christoph was our dj in the chat oh my words he did a brilliant job uh, a lot of fun and it was just mental that's me anyway uh so we get going i'm just building it up we'll see if more people want to come join uh hello to iceland i actually just got back from iceland i was over there in reykjavik this time last week cold coffee and it was it was great i love iceland iceland is just one of my favorite places in the world um i i, I love i love any everything to do with iceland it's a really cool place um reykjavik's nice and i love the countryside as well i've done the south i want to do the north next um so um yeah also uh, someone's asking me if i'm gonna be at bum ratty in ireland i will be playing at bum ratty in ireland definitely one of my favorite tournaments my friend actually sponsors that one so it'd be rude rude not to go along there uh it's a bit of a as we say in england a bit of a piss up um you're actually encouraged to drink guinness at the board it's one of the only chess tournaments where you're encouraged to drink while you play chess which um you certainly won't see magnus carlson drinking anything except for orange juice i feel okay so what are we um going to be doing today well first of all um my new course is out um and that is the second master method course so during this stream i am going to be pushing that course and trying to encourage you to buy it because we've all got to make a living hey ho um and I, i'll be talking about elements of that course and talking what how that can benefit you but i also want to take bits from the course and show you and give you a lesson as well so i want i want to give you like a free lesson at the same time um so you, you will be getting a lesson from a grandmaster uh, apparently I'm, st I'm still a grandmaster they haven't taken the title away from me yet Whew. so i will be giving you a lesson and what today's lesson is really on it's really a tactical lesson and the first thing i'm going to get you involved with a chest straight away and i want everyone watching this to get involved i'm going to be looking at the chat when i when i get a chance and be looking at your answers so it's very important for you to try and solve these things yourself and to do the best you can without a computer because blooming hate computers don't use a computer don't cheat you won't get anything from this webinar now um the thing we're going to talk about first of all is very important and yes i do chat a lot at the start of these webinars and we get into the chess get flowing soon but i i'm doing that to build up hopefully more people come along but what we're going to look at first of all is tactics now for me the best way and the most important way to improve your chess is to get better at tactics i've known so many chess players who are tricky tacticians they don't have any idea about positional play their openings are terrible 
and they're generally um you know can only do tactics but it doesn't matter because the tactics have got them to good places in chess if you're going to do one thing in chess if your tactics are good it can take you a long way so the most important thing now in the course which you can buy below if you just click on the button there's a link there it's 50 percent off i think for the next 12 hours maybe they're extended because i'm doing another webinar in two days but the course is really what i've done into two parts so i'm just going to show you now what my new course is about before we get into the chess maybe i'll run over a little bit with this webinar because i want to give you a full lesson as well now the course that i'm selling is can you see this let me just uh let me just do this like i say i'm not so used to this uh it is this course here so i'm just going to tell you about what's in it and, and how i came about to creating this course now when you're creating material in, in you know for a course etc i want to i want it to be the best it can be um i want it to help you guys and you know i've got lots of experience in teaching chess and and things that will help you in chess originally i was just going to do a tactical course because the guys at i chess said look if you do it just a tactical course it'll sell well it'll be easy to do and i thought okay well that's not a bad idea i mean I'm, i mean it's not all about selling well it's about i really want to give something that i think will help you improve so i started off doing a tactical course but i was not helping i was not i was not that happy with um I was not that happy with the way the course was going and i thought hang on a minute this is not this is not going to help you so much and then i thought right well what is really lacking with most people in chess that i've met who want to improve from my experience and i thought well most people i come across they are stuck in a rut they want to improve and they can't get to the next level and also they concentrate too much on the opening and chess is most important to know the middle game so then I thought, how can I help them out? Well, what I can do is give them a quick rundown of free openings, which they could play only an hour long so they don't get bored. So I've given you a quick three hour lesson to really give you a full repertoire as much as I can. But then what I've really explained is the middle game positions, which you'll get after the opening. And the idea of that is to... Um, basically so you'll never get in trouble in middle game positions well you know very rarely you'll know exactly what to do in the middle game so the whole first part of my course is designed about that now the second part of the course i hope you can see uh it's up there um let me just go through you can see part two is the tactical part and this is five hours in, in you know intensive tactical training now the awakening is it sounds a bit audius huxley doesn't it you know if you know audius huxley he was probably the most famous person to be uh born in the same town as me uh he inspired the doors um which uh you know one of my favorite bands and james munro actually gave me a very nice uh doors model um i'll tell you what mickey uh to answer your question after this lesson you will be doing that all over the shop let's just put it that way eh? um and what the awakening is all about is it's about okay let me show you a position now and let me demonstrate uh what the awakening is so we can now uh hopefully you can see the chessboard and i'm just going to wait for the chessboard to come up um, and what the awakening is about i'm now going to demonstrate on the chessboard here and what i found was was that it's in chess okay people say to improve your tactics here's a ta here's a tactics book go and look at some tactics and solve the tactics in there now that's all cool that's not a bad thing to do but how many times in a real game is someone going to come up to you tap you on the shoulder and say I I hang on a minute mate in this position there's checkmate in six so you know don't you know you've got to work out the checkmate in six here well unless you're cheating it never happens does it it never happens so what you need is you need to know when to be aware when to be awake when to turn on what i call in the course your spider senses the awakening and this is something that not a lot of people talk about you need to manage your time well and at the right moment you need to turn on your spider senses 
Um, and what that means is you've got to somehow be aware and you've got to look maybe in a way that you don't look normally. So what I mean by that is um, you've got to, uh, you know, grandmasters may see things differently to lower rated players. Their range of moves in a position may be greater. Their vision may be greater. And what I try to do in the course, which again, you can buy at 50% off below by clicking on the link. Now go and do it. You'd be crazy not to. What I'm trying to do is broaden your horizon so I'm trying to make you more creative as a chess player. I'm trying to try to show you how you can improve your creativity and how you can find the right moves. Let me give you an example of that now. This is taken from a game. Uh, I got it actually from, um, I think it was one of Agar's tactical books. And um, what, uh, basically, this, this game, why to sacrifice the piece? And we're just jumping to the position here. Um, and why to sacrifice the piece? And in this position, white clearly has quite a dangerous position. I think we can see that. It's black to move. I should say it's black to move here. Black now plays knight to f7. Um, and that is kind of controlling the d6 square. And also now that knight is kind of getting in the way of the bishop on b3. So black can castle. And here, let's think already, we're going to put you in the position of white. What should you be thinking um, as white in this position now chess is a logical game you've got to build up your build up your intuition through good logic now what you should be doing here is looking at all your pieces that are doing something so let's do that well the queen is quite actively placed in some cases that could create a very dangerous attack against the knight what else our bishop is quite well placed but in order to get that bishop in the game we're probably going to have to move our d-pawn here. And let me highlight the, the bits as we go along. That d-pawn may want to move forwards. Our knight is also quite good because our knight has potential to jump into a aggressive square. Our rook is very good as well. So all in all, we have very good compensation for the piece. Our opponent's king is not castled. And we also should be thinking then about tactical ideas because we are a piece down so we need to be trying to force the issue here we can't play slowly when you've given up material so you've got to be looking for the most forcing moves that create threats so this position i think the first move is reasonably straightforward as um uh, Klimt killer hello Klimt killer has found he's found the first move already we want to when you're attacking you just want to keep the pressure on your opponent and create as many threats as you can create the best threats you possibly can so what is the move here how can we bring you know how can we bring feeling to our pieces how can we activate our pieces even more well have a think about it everyone here and the move that we need to play we want to release this bishop as we said before the pawn is in the way so the logical move here is d6 and this creates a threat the threat here is queen takes knight, and that would be winning straight away. Other moves, if you let's, we we're looking about the awakening, the range of moves. So, what this chapter really does in the course, it tells you when you should be awake, how you're going to be awake, the things you need to look for. Now, in this position, I mean, if we try to force things immediately with something like knight to f6, well, what you've got to do before you play this move in a game, and I talk about this in the course, how you calculate this kind of idea. What you need to do, if that's your first instinct, you should always calculate your first instinct, you know, first. As, as simple as that sounds, if you see a move you like the look of, you should calculate that move first as deeply as you can. Now, that sounds so simple. So if your first instinct is knight f6, obviously, before you play that move, you should calculate it. So let's just go through what you should be thinking. Let's have a look at that. Knight f6, black has to take. And now the queen takes here, but we have we can get to this position very easily. And in this position, of course, we've got to consider our opponent's best defensive moves. And to be a great attacking player, you also have to be a great defensive player in order to realize our opponent's best defensive moves. And if I was black here, well, at the moment, white's not even threatening anything. The knight is guarding the rook. The knight is guarded by the king. And 
it's okay if i was black here i'd probably try to play something like queen d6 because now i'm blocking your d pawn i'm trying to exchange queens and it looks to me like has this helped white you've got to make an assessment if you can't see a clear way through then you would not play knight to f6 in the original position and the original position is here i mean knight to f6 to me looks like you're just swapping off one of your great attacking pieces and you're not really getting anywhere so i'd be looking at other options now um bishop h6 here has been suggested but i think here black can simply play knight takes h6 i don't see how that helps you you lose a piece i mean the most simple moves are, are often the best moves and i say simple in this position let's just bring as many troops into the battle as we can one thing you've got to do in chess if you can't see an immediate win with your most active pieces then you've just got to improve the range of your pieces the bishop here is blocked by its own troop with the next move d6 we attack the knight we open the bishop and we bring a pawn into the attack we do so many good things with one move so that is clearly the best move in the position now what did black play in this actual game well now a black castled kingside and this is the key position that i wanted to talk about okay imagine you're white here now this game was the player of the white pieces was rated 2157 so it's probably quite a lot higher than most you know most people watching this but it's kind of like we can see a typical mistake that that kind of rated player still makes here this is where we need to be awake because why are we going to be more tactically awake here we've sacked a piece we are playing aggressive moves like d6 but you should start to feel the energy behind your pieces the bishop on b3 feel the energy the pawn on d6 feel the energy you've really got to play with emotion sometimes when you're playing chess you've got to feel the moment so it's white to move here and and you've got to think now again i'm going to give you a minute or two to think about this about moves which you think you should play here now calculate as we did earlier with knight to f6 calculate the consequences of the first move you think of as deeply as you can if you think it's winning great you don't need to calculate anything else but if you can't if you can't find an answer or if you don't think it's winning then you need to move on to another move in this position to calculate do not get carried away by you know confusing your mind do one move at a time calculate one possibility at a time and i have to say the obvious move here is the move that a lot of people are suggesting is that the right move is this the right move i mean this knight on f7 is really really pinned down so it looks it makes sense to attack that one but try to calculate and i think this position demonstrates this awakening i think grandmasters with proper calculation i'm going to give you a bit of time in this position to think what you would do with white here i think most grandmasters in this position after a 10 minute think would find the right move and this shows you how awareness awareness is a good thing how you can open up your awareness how you can you know become more aware of ideas you've got to sort of broaden your horizon in some respects but sometimes in my case you know the reason i find ridiculous looking moves is often through desperation i calculate some variations and they look unclear or they look worse for me and then i think well i can't play that because it will lead me to a worse position and then i keep looking for other moves so you've got to you've got to try to find the best you know the best thing you can if you if you're getting stuck look for something else especially when you feel there should be something there now your uh, instincts will improve over time um as you become a better player but here it should be clear the awakening has happened that your pieces are so awake there should be a move here that's good um okay now i'm going to go through the thought processes which i think will make you a better player in this position well first of all the obvious move i think is knight g5 i think this is the move that most people would consider 
Now, if I was in this position, I'd like to think that I would not calculate anything else until I've looked at knight g5. And I calculate knight g5 as deeply as I can. If I came to the conclusion that knight to g5 is winning, then I would play it. If I thought it was not winning, then I'd have to look for other moves in this position. This is called the process of elimination. You're eliminating ideas until you come with a right idea. Well, let's have a look. Let's go for knight to g5. Well, if we play knight to g5, this is the move played in the game. Um, black is threatened with a disaster on f7. There's going to be a major explosion happening on f7 there. We don't want that to happen. So we've got to now think logically, how can black defend the knight in a better way? Well, the move, which is, I would say, the most obvious move here, is simply pawn takes pawn, opening up the queen, getting rid of a pawn, and now we're defending the knight in a good way. And this position, to me, looks very unclear. It's a very unclear position. I cannot, I can't see a, a way forwards here, really, for white. There's nothing clear. I mean, if I just got to this position, you don't have to calculate far. This is the whole thing. You need to calculate smart, but you don't need to calculate deeply in all variations. This is often the case. You only sometimes need to calculate one or two moves ahead. I mean, here, what can you play? Unless you see a brilliant move here, then I don't think you should go for knight g5. I mean, let's say we take on f7, getting some material back. This should be quite easy to calculate. And you can you can always train your calculation. You know, the brain is a muscle. And like any muscle, you can train it. I mean, maybe you could try going down the gym, you know, rather than doing some bench presses, just do some brain presses, get your chest book out, you know, put the music on and do some puzzles. Well, OK, maybe I don't suggest that you'd look bloody weird, but you get the idea. OK, so knight takes f7. And now, you know, if we try to take everything on f7, let's have a look here. Well, this position is better for black, isn't it? I mean, black's got two pieces. Well, I say two minor pieces, a bishop and a knight for the rook. And that's good. He's a point up if you count points. We don't want to do that. So let's go back. OK, so instead of knight g5. OK, we need to think of other options, do we not? So what other options do we have in this position? Knight g5 is not really working. Anyone else got an idea here? I'm looking at the chat now. Anyone else want to suggest a move here? So knight g5, it's not clear where we're going. So you need to broaden your horizon now, guys. The awakening is happening. Your spider senses should be tickling. They should be spider, spider, spider senses should be going. There must be something here. All your pieces are good. So we have other ideas here. What other ideas? Well, we can't go uh, something takes e7. We can take with a pawn. What I'd be thinking, let's be truthfully honest, you can think, get into my mind as a grandmaster now. The next thing I would be thinking here, I'd be thinking, what other forcing moves do they uh, therefore have? Knight g5 creates a threat. I want to play a move that either attacks is a capture is a forcing move or if i can't do something with my troops that are developed the ones that are highlighted here if i can't do a, a wham bam thank you thank you move if i can't explode in the position i want to bring in my reinforcements my bishop here and my rook here so first of all though let's see if we can do a wham bam move well the next idea the most forcing move is surely pawn takes pawn. This move captures a pawn and it's a forcing move. It forces black to play queen takes pawn. Do we have a good move here? Well, now um, I can't move the knight because queen takes e1 would be checkmate. For example, I can't play knight g5. That would be very embarrassing. You get back spanked there and we don't want to get back spanked, do we? Oh, no. And what else can we do? Well, here, if it was me, I'm just going through my thought, thought processes. I, I see that I can't do anything with my developed pieces. So what do we need to do? We need to try and bring in our reinforcements. The more troops we have, the better our chances. So as that's a Russian name, I, I'm afraid I don't speak Russian. So I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But uh, as Mr. or Mrs. Russian is saying, Bishop G5 looks very logical. And around here... I'd be thinking, okay, what can white, what can black do? Let's say black moves the queen somewhere like b4. 
Well, I'd be looking at this position. I'd be thinking, OK, well, this is better than the last line because I've got another piece into the attack. I've got another clergy into attack, as Mr. Partridge Boy has said. The reinforcements have arrived. Good stuff. Good stuff, everyone. And this looks better. But again, is there a clear way through here? No, I cannot see a clear way through. I'd be looking at ways to create threats here, but it's not obvious how you do that. Yes, this is more promising than the last line. But again, to me, it looks totally unclear. I'm spending a lot of time on this example, by the way. I'm sorry about that, but I think it's a very interesting example. So it shows how different players should think. And in this position, it shows how weaker players maybe think compared to stronger players. I mean, I've gone knight g5. OK, I've eliminated that. Now, pawn takes e7 is OK, but it's a little bit unclear, that move. I kind of eliminated that one. Now, we don't really have time for one of my favorite moves, h4. When you're a piece down, when you're attacking, remember, this is the awakening, meaning it's time for you to be awake and do something quickly. You don't have time to play a move like h4. It's far too slow in this position i know i love harry you know i i know that but in this position it's too slow you need to do something quickly so what else can we do anyone else got a suggestion so remember what i said if you can't find a wham bam move with your developed pieces look at bringing in the reinforcements this bishop here uh -uh. Uh, 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 uh. that's kind of an ambulance sound but uh maybe it's just a very weird sound so what else can we do well remember you want to try to play the most forcing moves you can well fred skinner is saying bishop g5 straight away maybe that's an idea let's have a look at that so bishop g5 well if we play bishop g5 here um can black simply play pawn takes d6 you need to have a good follow-up here otherwise this is maybe not helping you too much i like the idea though because you're bringing in reinforcements but you need to have a follow-up idea before you play this move not a bad idea but i'll tell you what there's a better idea and like i said broaden your horizons broaden your horizons Simon, I'm talking like a Filipino trying to sell you insurance. Well, actually, I, I haven't actually tried to sell anything recently, not for at least five minutes. So do you think it's time I try to sell you something? I think it is like any, you know, OK, well, look, guys, if you are watching this, this is to do with my new course, which you can buy in the description below. All you need to do is click that description below. There's a little link there. And at the moment, for a limited time, you will get it at 50% off. And it's all about calculation. It's all about middle game. This course will get you to a better level. I'm really confident it will. And you get a money back guarantee anyway if you don't like it. So you can't get better than that. So um, go on. Go and, go and buy it. Um, you'll become, well, I, don't, I didn't say oh, you'll become a GM. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I mean, come on. I, I'm not here selling snake oil. I'm trying to sell something that's actually going to help you. Uh, no, it will make you a better player. I'm pretty confident about that. And it is there in the link below. And, you know, you can support me by buying the course now and it will help you come better. But going back to the position, I'm going to give you clues. I want someone to get the right move. Now, process of elimination. Eliminate the moves that are not working. Bishop F4, that is a sensible developing move. But again, the awakening has happened. You need to try and create a threat. This move what does it actually do? It, it develops a piece. Yeah, sure. But does it create a threat? No, it doesn't create a threat. So we need we need to try and think of a more dangerous move. Thomas, what is the reason behind your move, sir? Tell me your reason. Have you broadened your horizon? Have you entered into GM's far? Whatever that is. Have our Van ha Valhalla, can we say that? Well, I love the idea because when you're attacking, another thing you've got to remember, every move has to have some logical sense, even in a complicated position. Have a look at your opponent as well. Look at your opponent's pieces here. What of your opponent's pieces are good? Well, the only good pieces Black really has is the bishop on g7. This is the a, a key piece that's defending 
the king on g8 this piece is the only black piece which is really doing anything because let's have a look at the other black pieces and you can do something similar in your own games the knight here that's a rubbish piece it's pinned down so that piece is bad the rook here is bad it's just defensive the bishop on c8 is bad it's trapped the rook on a8 is bad it's trapped the knight on b6 it's bad it can't move the queen on d7 what is the queen on d7 doing that's not great so black's only good piece is the piece in red the piece on g7 so if we can eliminate that piece we're going to improve our chances cool i've made a lovely pattern there of colors i'm just going to admire my paint work there for a second i should become a chess artist with all the lovely colors i've put on the board there so logically speaking if we can get rid of that piece the one piece which is active and if we can do it by exchanging off one of our bad pieces it will be great now have a think about why black or can black go bishop takes h6 so let's have a look at this on the board bishop to h6 a fascinating idea and just the kind of move that a lot of players would not have in their horizon and in the course i talk about improving your horizon i use this example and a couple of others but this move it shows you you've got to broaden your horizons but it's based on logic now the point is here um well what happens if black takes that bishop black is now two pieces out well adam well done adam um Zulewski, um he's found this in he's he's got the right answer now black has lost control of the f6 square so we can now go pawn takes e7 we are threatening knight to f6 check which as you can see is a complete disaster for black but what can black do black has to go really queen takes pawn and now this square is not defended by the bishop so we can go knight to f6 check if the bishop was on g7 black could just go queen takes knight and the queen would be defended but here white is going to win the queen because the knight comes in that queen will be taken by the rook the knight is this is winning it's actually this idea bishop h6 is a brilliant idea it's absolutely brilliant and this shows you how you can broaden your horizon by calculating by thinking further ahead and by really broadening broadening your horizon now what else can black do well let's say pawn takes d6 trying to get rid of that pawn what would you play here okay the next move is quite simple how can white win in this position let's have a look at all the possibilities how does white win in this position now white to play and win now any suggestions white to play and win it should be quite easy here um Clint killer congratulations sir you have found the right answer there's no point taking this bishop off the board yet there's a better move and the better move you have two choices bishop takes bishop or do you have a check look for the most forcing moves which one is better use the process of elimination have a look which move do you think is better have a reason you need to have a reason you can explain to your best friend in a sentence what i say and i'm going to give you a great bit of uh, advice here just we'll come back to the position in a minute i'll just put my ugly face on the on 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 the screen for a second just so you know why i'm still here a great bit of advice i'm going to give you okay when you're thinking in chess you always need to have a plan but you always need to have a reason i haven't heard anyone else explaining this in this way when you're playing chess when you're coming out of a plan make sure you can explain that plan i've just come up with this idea now hence why i put my face on the thing imagine you have a double ganger of yourself sitting next to you in you know imagine he's sitting next to you and he's 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 like you know he's a good chess player he's basically you and he loves chess what you need to be able to do when you're playing chess for your plans you need to be able to explain your idea to him your doubleganger in a verbal way i mean if you can't do that you're probably your plan probably doesn't make much sense you're probably not doing the right plan you need to have a reason for everything you're doing 
So imagine you have, just imagine basically you have a great chess friend. When you're playing your ideas and you come up with a plan, you need to be able to explain it verbally. So you need to be think, well, I'm doing that to try and get rid of my opponent's defensive pieces so that my knight can come in, my queen can try to come in with checkmate. Or, you know, even in the opening, you could be saying, well, I'm trying to exchange these bishops off because why are you trying to, why are you exchanging bishop for bishop? You could say, well, I'm trying to exchange bishop for bishop because I want to weaken my opponent's light squares because that's where I'm going to attack him. So all I'm saying is um, when you're playing, you need to be able to verbalize a lot of your plans. You need to be able to explain them in a clear way. Now, going back to the position, I'm going to do that here. That's what I do when I'm commentating. You know, I'm just verbalizing my ideas. I'm doing what you should be doing yourselves. I'm just doing it. And I've had a lot of experience doing it. Um, talking to yourself is the first sign of madness. Well, that, that isn't maybe indeed true. You don't actually have to talk to yourself. Maybe I'm just blooming mad. Maybe I'm just insane. There was a great chess quote. Uh, my favorite ever chess quote. And uh, my favorite ever chess quote is... Um, uh, chess doesn't make people go mad. Chess keeps mad people sane. I love that quote. So chess doesn't actually make people go mad. It actually keeps mad people sane. Now, I, you know, of course, I don't know if I believe that. But I'll tell you one thing. One thing I do know is that chess has really helped me out in my life. And it's really helped me become a you know, you know a better human in some respects, and it's given me a good life, and I love it. Um, I love it as much as I you know as anything else. And for me, it's art. So it's you know it's helped me a lot. So it certainly has, even if I am a little bit bonkers. But you know, it's better to be bonkers than sane. Sane people are boring. Who wants to be sane? Okay, you can go a bit too mad. Let's not talk about Bobby Fischer. Okay, well anyway, in this position. The reason I'm going knight to f6 check is, be is because I want to bring my queen down to g7 and checkmate. It's simple as that. Or I want to win the queen on d7. I mean, if my opponent moves the king, I win the queen. That's absolutely fine. I don't mind that happening. And if my opponent takes on f6, I just need to calculate this position. And you should be able to see that it's going to be checkmate because this knight can't move because it's pinned to the uh king and next move i'm going to play queen into g7 checkmate so i'm verbally explaining my thoughts and this is what you guys need to do when you're playing if you start doing this who knows i think you'll find you become much stronger players and of course if you want other techniques like this remember to buy my course below it's 50 percent off only for a limited time this is the chance to get that little bit extra in your chest you need it's in the link below go and buy it OK, and, you know, chess is a hard game. This is a hard example. Don't get me wrong. I've got some more examples coming on a little bit later on. Um, we have a question here. OK, so the question is um, from, uh, I think, Adam. Uh, no, Thomas. Um, he says, instead of pawn takes pawn, what about queen to f5? Well, that's a good question. Uh, let's try to answer this ourselves. Well, if queen takes f5, what do you think white should play? Look, you can probably answer your own question here. Um, obviously, this is a good idea. Black wants to exchange queens off, but it's white's move. White moves first here. What should white play here? Look for the most forcing moves in the position. You know, you could take queens off here, but what is a better move than taking queens? Try to create a threat here. Um, try to create a threat here. Can you take something? Have a look at taking something. Well, Mario's got it right. Clint Killer's got it right. Let's, you know, that game Pac-Man where you go, um, 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 look, this guy here is Mr. Pac-Man. He wants to munch everything. Pawn takes pawn. And what you'd need to do before you play Bishop H6, you'd need to calculate all these lines. And of course, we're not doing that now because we're not on a real game situation. I'm going to give you tips after this, how we can improve our, our reasoning. But you need to calculate before you play this move. Let's have a look what black can do. Let's say queen takes queen, because if black moves the rook here, well, in this position, there's going to be some nasty ideas here. For example, knight to d6 is one of those so-called nasty ideas. I'm attacking these two, and my bishop is incredibly strong. This should be winning 
for white. And I know this is quite a complicated position, but I wanted to use a good complicated position. Uh, hello, Job. Uh, good evening. Um, but let's say queen takes queen, for example. Well, we could even allow this to happen. We can take on f8. Let's get a rook, shall we? Because we're, you know, because we want to get free rooks on the board. Why not? And and now after taking that one, um, well, black probably plays something like bishop takes f8, pawn takes here, and then bishop takes here. And the important move to see in advance here is knight to d6. And we're going to take on f7, and we're going to actually be an exchange up. That is to answer your question there. Okay, well, look, I think we spent enough time on uh, that particular position. But what I wanted to show you was really uh, what I try to do in my course. I try to show you when you have to be awake and how to calculate better. I can't do that in a one hour webinar. You know, you have to buy the course to get all my you know secrets and it is there below. Go on, click on the button, make a ginger happy, go and click on that button and buy the course. But um, you know what you, what you need to do during your games, some people spend too long in the opening. Why bother spending so much time in the opening? You need to save your time for these kind of positions I've just shown you, which I call the awakening. And then what you need to do is train yourself to be awake. So when you get to moments like that in your game, and in a game of chess, there's only probably three moments where you're um, you're going to have to be awake, you know, because other moves are going to be pretty obvious. But you need to know when to be awake. And you need to do that by your pieces, your opponent's pieces, what's happening in the game, how the game's running. The game is a story. One game of chess is a story that's played out in front of the audience of the pieces and yourself. It's like Shakespeare said, it's a big play. Life is a big play. The game of chess is a big play and it needs to be played out and you're in charge of that. And you need to know when that play comes to the crescendo. That's what the course talks about. Uh, a lot and i go into the details of that and that last example kind of also showed you how you can use your calculation to think outside of the box um okay let's bring up another example this one a little bit easier because that was a bit hard okay guys i promise you it, i'm doing another webinar here in two days time uh that would be saturday i think uh i promised to wear a ginger gm t-shirt there I, i'll give it a go yeah um i should we should sell red beards in the ginger shop that that would be funny <laughs> maybe maybe we could do that okay anyway another example coming up so uh, a nice easy one now another thing i talk about and i may have used this before but okay um i don't care i'm going to use it again um is patterns how do you start recognizing tactics well one way you start recognizing tactics is by recognizing patterns chess is a game of patterns I try to hammer in patterns into your mind. Tactics are patterns, set patterns. Once you see a pattern in one game, hopefully you recall it even subconsciously and be able to use it in another game. The next example here is a very easy example. It's black to play and win. I'm hoping you will all, all um, be able to solve this one. Now, let me put a position on the board. Um, by the way, Mario, um, I believe these are going to go on uh, YouTube anyway. So if you can't, if you're not around, oh, what's happening there? It's, it's, the board is freaking out. Why are you freaking out, board? Okay, that's all right. It's not freaking out. Um, okay, so black to play and win. Quite an easy one. Now, you can see it's, it's, it's doing a little bit of, um, I don't know what the hell it was doing there. Um, okay, but they will be on the iChess YouTube channel. So if you can't get them, go to the iChess YouTube channel and also, if you can't, if you can't also see it, buy the course. And you haven't got much time now to buy the course left. Um, and you know, you've only got a limited amount of time to do that before it doubles in price. And this course will help you get, you know, take you to the next level. Now, openings. I think everyone spends too much time on openings. Um, in the course, I give you one opening with white, one opening against e4, and one opening against d4. But what I do. I tell you about the middle game positions you will get from the opening. That's my idea. Um, okay, now everyone who got the answer here, like I said, it should be quite an easy one. I call this checkmate the crisscross, crisscross checkmate. 
I believe there was even a band called Criss Cross. It's quite an easy one. The answer is, of course, Queen takes a free check and then Black is going to crisscross with the other bishop. Pawn takes queen. Bishop here, checkmate. Crisscross, checkmate. Now, it's it may be easy for some, this position, but it may be really hard to spot this for others. How is it so easy? How is it that some people in the original position will see queen takes f3 straight away and other people just won't see it? Well, what it is, it's basically pattern recognition once you've seen something once in chess you've got to try you know you've got to you know once you see it, you should remember it in future but there are alarm bells for example the bishop here is cutting off the king so you can see oh you should be thinking ah well my opponent's king cannot move so if i can just check my opponent's king i can force checkmate and also as job has said when the awakening has come when the awakening has arrived i don't know you guys out there who've seen highlander i love that film i love highlander i'm growing a bit of a scottish beard at the moment and he says there will only be one i thought it was actually called the awakening but when you start to notice things in the position which i train you to do in the course which you can buy now then you will realize that these moves become a lot easier to see because you're trained to do it you will train to see these forced moves. Your brain will recognize the patterns. Let me just, you know, now, um, you know, prove that to you that I'm not just talking a load of baloney because now you've seen that first puzzle. Okay. Now you've seen the first puzzle. I tell you what, this next one should, you should all now, you should all be like, whoa, it's easy. It's easy. So, okay. So I'm going to, um, um, Okay. Oh, by Mr. Partridge. You can get the rest of this later on on the iChess YouTube channel. So now, what about this next game? Now, this was a game of ex-world champion Alexander Alakine, one of the greatest world champions. He, he was uh, uh, a Russian world champion. He used to go everywhere with his cat. So when he go and play the chess tournament, he'd take his cat. Now, I've got Charlie the ginger chess cat here, but He's asleep on the pillow over there, so I don't dare waken him. But Al Alakine used to take his cat um, everywhere, you know, to chess tournaments. And you know what his cat was called? Anyone in the chat know what Alakine's cat was called? Have a guess. Have a guess. Okay. Whoever does this is, is a legend. What was ex-world champion Alakine's cat called? That's my little puzzle for you. Come on. Have a guess. What? what come on. You should all get this. And it wasn't called Charlie. Anyone? Anyone know? Yes. Well done, Mario. His cat was, of course, called Chess. Come on. That should have been easy. OK, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at a game of Alakine. And now I'm going to show you how patterns, once you get them in your brain, you should be able to recognize them. And this mysterious game in front of us becomes a lot easier. And that's what the course is all about. My course is all about basically trying to get that across to you and so you can recognize these patterns and so that you chess just becomes easier i want to make it easier for you okay so we're going to go through this game quickly now the game started e4 alakine was white it was a french defense and in this position by the way i recommend this defense for you as black but one thing i would say is that I don't recommend you play it the way that Black did here. Um, knight to c3 is uh, one of the main ways of meeting the French defense. Now, in my course, what I recommend you do as white, and I'll talk about this at the end of this game, um, but I, I'll talk about the opening I tell you to play, because it's very simple. You can learn it in one hour. Bang! Okay, but anyway, um, I'm knight c3. Now, the difference between uh number one and number two is quite different they do link in together my master method one was um it had lots of different things and i built on that and the second one but they were also independent so the second one i give you proper openings so you will have openings and the first one i give you a whole overview of how you can improve your chess but really the second course is openings middle games tactics anyway on to the game so knight c3 bishop b4 the win aware variation bishop to d3 and now a mistake. The next move is, as some people will say, a bit of a noob move. Bishop takes c3. Now, you know, 
like I said earlier, you've got to have a reason for every move. Every move has to have a reason. Why does black take on c3 when he doesn't need to? Why does black go bishop take c3? Why? You don't need to do that. That doesn't have a reason. Can you explain that to your doubleganger? Can you explain that move to your friend? You don't need to move that bishop. The knight is not going anywhere. It's pinned anyway. So why is black taking that knight off the board? It does not make any sense. This is one of those small mistakes which, you know, you should always avoid. Don't move that bishop. You don't need to. So obviously Alakine took back. And now we see another mistake. H6. Why did black play that move? What is that move all about? That's the kind of move that I don't know. I mean, it, you know, I, I mean, there's got to be a reason. Every move you play has to have a reason. Can anyone tell me a reason behind that move? No, there is no reason. That reason, could you explain that to your friend? If you were down the pub having a nice pint of beer, I have to say in England, what we do, we often, after our games of chess, take the chessboard down the pub and we discuss it between ourselves because it helps us. That's what you've got to do. Even if you're talking to yourself in the corner of the pub, and I know you'd look really weird, could you explain the move H6 to yourself? No, you can't. It's a waste of time. So now Alakine develops a piece, Bishop A3, and the reason for this is twofold. It stops black playing C5, maybe one of the only moves that black wants to play in the, in the French. And also, look at that. It cuts the king off. The king is cut off there. So... Black now plays knight d7, trying to play this move. And in this position, white plays queen e2. Why is he doing that? He's lining the queen up against the king, and he's threatening to win a pawn by going pawn takes pawn because of the pin on this pawn. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. That bishop, I like that. Tom S., you're right. That bishop is a savage. It's a complete and utter savage. So now in this position, black takes on e4. White decides to go bishop takes e4, and now black develops a piece at last, bringing a piece out. He wants to castle, but the problem is he can't castle because of that bishop. So now um, bishop goes back to d3, white wants to keep that bishop, and black thinks, well, I've got to get my last piece into the game, so I'm going to go b6, trying to play bishop to b7. What move should white play now? And this is a move... If you play it in your games, you've got to say, boom, the next move is a boom. Remember the pattern from the last example. That's a major clue. That's a major clue. What is, what is, a, what is, well done, Mike. Remember the crisscross. What did we just talk about? The crisscross. Well done, Anton. Can you see it? The crisscross. This bishop is homing in on that king. That king can't move. Uh, Will, you've got the right idea. You've got it the wrong way around. Or who was it who said it? Okay, there is there is a way to do this. It's checkmate in two moves. And if I had this in a game, you know, it's all about the awakening here. You'd be no, you'd know that there's a move here because you can see that Black can't castle. So you'd be trying to think of a way to force the position opening. So you'd have to look for these alarm bells, these little alarm bells. If these little alarm bells come to life if they come to life then you have to spend more time and you have to try to find the finish and the finish here is the beautiful move queen takes e6 check and it's all because of this stupid h6 move i told you that was a rubbish move what does black play here well if queen e7 that is what i call the kiss of death checkmate and if pawn takes queen well now we have another version of the crisscross and you can see it's the same pattern again as we saw before. It's the crisscross. And you've got to sing it when you do it. Crisscross, crisscross. And it's the crisscross checkmate. And uh, you can see it's just another pattern. How do we get to this pattern? By looking for the alarm bells. So we looked because black couldn't castle. We looked at ways to try to open up the pawns here. We should have also noticed in the position as white before we play queen takes pawn that black has played this silly move h6 we want to take advantage of that what was what what move let's go back to that move what square did h6 weaken what square did this weaken it weakened the g6 square as soon as you move a pawn any pawn on the board weakens a square and that square g6 was a key square 
to us winning this idea um well i am i i basically paz oh do i have to pronounce that, that name the question is we're still in the opening you told us earlier about the awakening in the middle game well the thing is what i'm trying to get across to you is the awakening can happen at any moment in a game of chess you're the player you've got to be aware you've got to be awake for when that moment is so the whole point is it can come in the opening it can come in the middle game it can come in the ending even um but you've got to be aware due to what's going on on the board to when you need to suddenly think hang on a minute this is the moment i need to wake up and basically get my head stuck into the action basically the moment where you need to sit there and think for a long period and go hang on a minute there's something here i can feel it i can feel it there must be something here that's when you need to think for a longer moment of time so the awakening can happen at any moment really in a game of chess it's just up to you and what the course tries to teach you is when to, when you're going to be aware and i do that in the last five chapters so you get five hours of examples which i've planned you know i've done over like um uh you know at least 100 hours preparation work before filming for this course and i've tried to find good examples to demonstrate what i'm doing quickly here of course if you want to you know if you want to buy the course it's going to help you it's going to help you get these this this next stage these tactics and it is at the moment it's there you can click on it just below if you're watching this live it's going to be it's only a short period but it's half price and you will get all these secret tactics these ideas which will revolutionize your chest and take you to the next level you'd be crazy not to buy it wouldn't you okay so what else do i do in the course well another thing as we're coming to the end of this um one thing that took me ages to decide upon and this i think is if i do say so i don't normally say this but it's a stroke of genius there you go i said it um another thing that a lot of people uh say to me is um someone saying how does simon have two two uh colors in his hair well look uh this is my angry beard and this is my not so angry hair uh it happens a lot in gingers i was really ginger once but now it's going i'm losing my gingerness it's a sad sad situation but don't ask me to sing anymore don't ask me to sing okay anyway so what what i want to do another question a lot of people ask me is look simon i concentrate so much on openings i buy opening books all the time and i get all these open books is it really helping me well my short answer is i mean no you're probably wasting money on buying lots of opening books an opening book costs 20 pounds i know so many people who have brought when i go to their house to teach them i don't do teaching anymore i'm too busy doing these things when i go to teach them i go to their house and they've got uh, they've got so many opening books lined up behind them and i'm like okay i see you got a lot of opening books and they're like yeah i haven't really read many of them you know and i was like okay so you spent 20 pounds on that book 20 pounds five books that's a hundred pounds you spent and they're like yeah i know but i can't really get into them and i was thinking well hang on a minute this is not good for the normal person not a lot of us has got time to read an opening book what my course tries to do in one hour i don't go into things into much detail that's true i'm going to be honest but what i do i try to give you a quick opening lesson which gets you into the middle game position that i want you to play in order to revolutionize your chess let me give you an example of that yeah i mean opening books can be good don't get me wrong some people love opening books it depends how you like learning if you, if you don't like watching videos well what the bloody hell are you doing here you're in the wrong place because this is like you know this is like youtube so goodbye but if you, you know but opening books can be good they can be great and they can give you much more information it depends how you learn but for some people they don't like they don't like reading reading these books it's like a waste of time you know because it won't help them um now let me show you what i mean uh before we finish this and what i do in the course again what i try to do okay for example that last line let me just give you one example as white i give you a repertoire based on e4 now the positions that i'm aiming you get to and i'm just looking at the chat there arian um i i think i did just answer your question didn't i i mean i say um da, 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 da. okay so okay well e4 
e4 basically um sorry i maybe missed your question i'll try to answer it again i i base a repertoire on e4 because i'm trying to get you into a particular position an isolated pawn position in the middle game and actually what i spend two three hours talking about is the middle game positions you will get so let's pick a move okay let's say c6 what i recommend you do here i go for the open quickly i recommend you go d4 this is the caracon and i recommend you take here and i recommend you go c4 because what i'm trying to do this is all main line i'm not going to talk about it a lot but what i do i recommend you get this position here what is this position this is the position i want you to get in most of your games it's an isolated pawn position i'm not going to explain it in detail here because we we are running out of time but what i'm trying to do is base a repertoire when you have the isolated pawn because you get great attacking chances for why i want you to become a better attacking player i want you to play more aggressively hence why i'm giving you lines like this this is just one example and you can't do it against every opening but let's say against the french what do i do against the french well i recommend you go d4 and now knight to d2 and my idea here is that let's say c5 we go c3 and in this position after something like pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn here you get the isolated pawn position again now of course like i said you can't get it in every opening i'll be lying if that was the case but i try to find as many examples as i can because why do i do that i'm trying to make your job as easy as possible so when you get a middle game position you you know exactly what to do even so you're kind of skipping the opening you're skipping the opening now I am a D4 player mainly, that's correct. But I, uh, but the thing is, okay, for example, look at this position. The last game I had, I beat Grandmaster Quainus, who's this round, my mouse is stuck now. I was a D4 player. Look what I did. I went D4, and this is how the opening went against Lithuanian number one player. The game went as this, and look what happened. We got, I'm just going through the position quickly because you'll see what my subtle plan was in a minute. This is the position I got in the middle game. Do you see something here? Even though I started with D4, what is this position? It's an isolated pawn position. So even though the opening is gone, it's a similar middle game position you will get from the E4 openings I will show you. And this position... This is what I want because we're going to attack. We're going to try to checkmate. So what I've done in the course, really, I've tried to give you openings like this where you can kind of skip the openings and get straight into the middle game. And I concentrate more on the middle games because I think it's more important for you to understand what you're doing in the middle games. OK, but look, we've come to the end of um, this webinar. I'm doing another one in two days. Now, I will encourage you one last time because... I've got to make a living and you know doing selling stuff like this is what helps me make a living um i do loads of free stuff on youtube if you search ginger gm you use loads of free videos there but in order to do those free videos i need to obviously sell stuff as well so if you want something that you know you can i think will definitely improve your chess that will um go over some of the things i've talked about today then click on that thing below that at the moment will give you a 50 percent off offer i know it's a lot of money don't get me wrong i know it's expensive um but if you think about all the books you can buy that guy brought 80 pounds worth of books this course is aimed at you know getting you to that next level without the need of buying you all those books so um what books do i recommend look um uh, my favorite book is brilliancies and blunders any tactical book I think tactics, as I really say here, is the best way to improve your chess. Tactics, tactics, tactics. Understanding patterns as well um, is a great way of learning. But look, I um, so yeah, brilliant seas and blunders is 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 a book I go for. But any tactics book is is a great great book. And um, okay, look, guys, I've got to go now. I've actually got uh, 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 something else I've got to do quite urgently. Uh, got Grandmaster David Howe's. Uh, yeah, doing doing well i've got to hopefully chat with him now and um yeah I'll, I'll hopefully see you in two days same time in two days i hope you enjoyed uh, the webinar and uh, i hope to see you again in two days remember 
buy the course now it's the free fit it's the link below half price or go and look at my free youtube stuff i do try to do loads of stuff on youtube for free so it's not about the money it's you know i can do more free stuff when i have more time to do it so um i'll see you all uh, again in two days hopefully thank you so much thank you all for joining in this webinar you're all the people who make this possible so thank you thank you uh, massively and uh, i'll see you again soon cheers for now bye